question is, when is a parking garage not a parking garage? And the answer is when it's part of a tunnel and bunker network to be used in case of war. And there's one country threatening that war, potentially the big threat, Russia. Tommy Rask, Helsinki City Rescue Department, is going to show us around. So if we go and see the main entrance... 20 metres, 60 feet below ground, cut into Helsinki's bedrock. How quickly can you put this together in case of war? 72 hours. And 6,000 people in here, how many people can you fit in shelters in the whole of Helsinki? Uh, over 900,000. So that's enough for the population plus visitors? Yeah, yeah, it is. The government's been building bunkers here since the 1960s. 5,500 in Helsinki, more than 50,000 across the country. Enough for 80% of the country's 5.5 million population. Deeper and deeper. Yeah. But the scale of it, not the only surprise. Some of it's open to the public. What's this? A floorball game. This is a bunker with a sports hall. Oh my goodness. It's a goal. Much of it dual use to offset the costs. So this is one example of our dual purpose use of the shelter. Dual purpose, yeah. Yeah, yeah so sports every day of the week. Yeah. Time of crisis, what happens here? All the sporting uh, goods stacked away. All these halls, these sheltering halls are divided by smaller uh, sheltering rooms. And not just sports halls, children's play areas, possibly the safest in the world. Cafes, even a swimming pool. Just a sheltering hall, yeah. but with a pool. Yeah, with an Olympic sized pool. Ol Olympic size, okay, wow, wow. But everything here with one purpose in mind. Blast doors, gas barriers, decontamination areas, even the two billion year old bedrock, more than just blast proof. So if there's a nuclear bomb, the rock itself absorbs the radiation, keeps yeah. everyone here safe. Yeah, yeah. that's and, the idea. And the tunnels as well, they're, they're curved so that they also prevent some of the blasts yeah, coming they, through. They take the, the most of the, of the hit. And now it's a car park. It's a car park. Again. Again. <laughs> that's, that's quite a bizarre feeling. Yeah. <laughs> One minute you're preparing for a war, the next minute you're playing hockey, and now, now it's a car park. Yeah. Here you can see the different uh, layers. And before we leave, Rask shows us another shelter just begun. Drill a hole in it, put explosives in, blow it, and yeah. move forward. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Cheers. Goodbye. Up, here come the traffic. This looks like the way out. Absolutely fascinating. And that's happening right under these streets here. Long-term plans for a potential conflict uh, that the country here really hopes that by joining NATO, that becomes an even more distant uh, prospect. Kim? Oh, uh, astounding, a really different world there that you're showing us. Snake Robertson live in Helsinki. Thank you so much. Let's go now to Fred Pikin standing by in Berlin. And Fred, so what are the, the foreign ministers there saying uh, on that uh, Finland issue? Well, on the Finland issue, they say that they want Finland uh, in NATO as fast as possible, and of course Sweden as well. But right now, Finland is, of course, uh, one of the main points of the agenda, because that's the one that could ask for that ascension in the next uh, coming hours, as Nick was just alluding to. And, you know, one of the things that the uh, foreign ministers of NATO said as they arrived for this meeting uh, this morning is they say that they want to see this through very quickly. They say that Finland is obviously ready for NATO membership. It certainly meets all the criteria that are necessary. But they also say that, you know, if the Russians are angry about Finland wanting to come into NATO, the Russians and Vladimir Putin only have themselves to blame. They say that it's, of course, Finland and Sweden as well looking to enhance their security. And that is why they are asking for NATO membership. And uh, the Germans who are hosting this meeting, they say they want to make it happen as fast as possible. I want you to listen to what the German foreign minister said as she arrived. 
Germany has prepared everything to do a quick ratification process and at yesterday evening many many countries has underlined this as well that it's an important uh, part that there won't be an inter-between time a gray zone but uh, that if uh, these two countries are deciding to join they can join very quickly join very quickly she says but of course there are still some hurdles or one major hurdle and, and at this point in time that hurdle seems to be the turks seems to be turkey turkey is saying uh, they are skeptical about sweden and finland joining nato they say uh, in the form of the turkish president that they believe that these places are a uh, safe haven for terrorists uh, as they put it and so therefore saying that right now they're not sure whether or not they want to support that it's quite interesting to hear because as we were at the arrivals uh, earlier this morning kim uh, for this meeting um, all of the foreign ministers, or most of the foreign ministers, said that they wanted to work out these issues. They believed that they could work out these issues. I tried to ask the Turkish foreign minister as he arrived as well, but he simply went on and wouldn't answer that question. So that certainly seems to be that issue that is still there that could be a problem. But if you look at the vast majority of member nations, they certainly want to make this happen as fast as possible. And they certainly do believe that uh, Finland and Sweden will become very, very important members of NATO very quickly. All right. So, uh, Fred, setting uh, Finland aside for a second, uh, for the foreign ministers, I guess, uh, getting together another chance to express their solidarity, that uh, united front mm -hmm. against Russia. So concretely, what, what might that mean? Well, it certainly means that the NATO member nations uh, say that they are uh, working closer together. They want to add uh, and increase that coherence within NATO. Uh, and, uh, and it's really a vast amount of different things uh, that they are working on right now, because there are, of course, a lot of NATO nations and nations within the alliance um, that border the conflict region, that border Ukraine or that border, for instance, Russia. We, we heard the Romanian foreign minister. They're obviously very worried about the situation in the Black Sea. There's fighting going on in the Black Sea very close to the borders with Romania. Then you have the Baltic states. They're obviously very concerned about their security uh, being na na uh, neighbors of Russia and at the same time hearing some of the rhetoric uh, that's coming out of Moscow. So what, the, uh, what NATO is trying to do is it's trying to project that co coherence and increase that coherence. And it's doing that on a military level, but on a political level as well, Kim.